Like this you're one right here, this. I think Carl Banks out his damn mind for rooting idiot. for the Cowboys when he got the skins here. I think you out your damn mind for rooting for the Lakers when you got the Wizards here. So let me ask you this, Marcus. But the Wizards are terrible. Oh, Does it, oh, 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 okay. So you root for the team just because they good? No, I root for the I rooted for the New York Yankees when they were terrible. Me too. I rooted for the New York Giants when they were terrible. Me too. I root. I'm not going to root because it's tough. For the New York Knicks. I got a question. Why are they terrible? Okay. Well, so it don't matter if the team is good or not. You either love or you not. Uh, if you can I'm cheer, the Lakers. It, it's so much better to cheer when you once jeer. Hold on. We we were terrible in the early days. Lakers ain't never been terrible. So do we? Come on, man. Come on, man. We are t- we talk about t- 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 I mean, we're going to talk about t- three, four. We're talking about three, four year period. I mean, my brother, come, come on, man. Just terrible. No, 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 We have a great front no, office. I'm not talking about the Knicks right now. I'm talking about the Los Angeles Lakers. And I'm talking about the New York Knicks. When you were six years old, they drafted Magic Johnson. You have no memory. They're not being the team. Furthermore, I'm sorry. Furthermore, I was seven when they drafted Magic Johnson. Furthermore, number one, they drafted Magic Johnson. Number two, I was in the college basketball at that time, I saw the National Championship game, son. Furthermore, I was a huge James Worthy fan. Oh, we don't talk about that that much. James Worthy? 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 He's a Laker. I was a Laker fan since they became the Lakers since in 1980. Okay. Fair I mean, enough. You can, you can say what you want to say, hey, look, but man. Look, you can't sit here and tell me I can't, I got, I have to, I have to stay in my hood to like stuff. That's stupid. I know. I understand that you feel it is stupid. I understand that I am in the very small minority in this opinion, and that's okay. Yeah. You know what? I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't really, you do the hypocritical. Thing, I right? really don't we care that y'all don't agree. I really don't care that y'all don't agree with me. Okay. I, I don't mean, I understand. I don't that. care. I brought the subject up. As long as you realize you're you being a hypocrite, you can ah, ah, it ah. No, I don't think I am. But you know what? As long as that's what you feel, fair enough. All I'm saying is, if you live. In Brooklyn, New York. In Brooklyn, New York. And you grew up rooting for the Knicks or the freaking Seattle Supersonics. And now you got a team that's in Brooklyn. I don't have a problem with it. Would I switch? Hell no. Would I ever switch? Hell no. Because Because for me personally, they will never. And listen to me. Hear me clear when I say this. There will never come a time that I will ever give up the New York Yankees who won 27 titles, the New York Giants who won 8, and the New York Knicks who won 2. Trevor, on the line. What's up, brother? How you doing? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for calling. Ain't no ass stepping with Marcus J, man. What you want to get in on? Well, this discussion over, over, you know, being the guy out there your team. All right. I understand So you basically went down there, you picked up a love for the team, and you carry in a love for the team with you wherever you go, basically. Yeah. And that's fuck. That's fair. That's consistent with what I'm saying. Like, for example, I'll tell you about with me. When I came to Virginia, I wanted to pick up a college football team because I don't do college football. So because I'm here, I said, you know what? I'm a to with Virginia Tech because I'm here. But because I grew up in Jersey City and it ain't a big deal college sports there, as you know, from Jersey, I picked up a team when I came down here. I didn't want to go to South Carolina and pick up Clemson. I didn't want to go to California and pick up UCA like some cats would do, Trevor. You understand what I'm saying? But why did you right, pick right, Tech? Right. Yeah, I picked up Tech because I flipped the coin between Tech and UVA because I'm consistent. Yeah. I live in Virginia. That makes you a fan. Go Trevor, for let it. me ask you a quick question. Who's your football team? The Jets? All right, let me ask you this. Where were you and who were you rooting for when Doug Williams was in the Super Bowl? When Doug Williams, I was looking for the Washington Redskins. <laughs> and I want to ask Marcus J that same question on the air. Who were you rooting for? I was rooting for the black man in the Super Bowl. Okay. Where well, are you going with that? When Tony Dungy <laughs> reported the Super Bowl. Man. But you just said you won't switch your team. Yeah, I'm not going to switch my allegiance you root, for the you team. You said you won't go root for him, though. I'll root for the brother. But you said you won't go root for him. Dude, man, hey, being a black man come ahead of all that. Oh, you want to oh. really, really go there? Oh, I'm just saying. Hey, 
I want you to say no. you rooted no, that's, for him. That's, that's... He rooted for your team, Ruben. Whatever, I man. Know. You got it on record. I mean, whatever, I ain't man. worried about it. Hey, I rooted for Tony Dungy and I also rooted for Lubby Smith. They they played against each other in the same game. So where you going? Hey, I already made my point. Yeah, you ain't make no point. I did. Trevor, you want to get anything else before we let you go, bro? So there. Appreciate it. Thank you for calling Trevor Trevor from New Jersey. All right, last thing I want to get into in the sports roundup here is the NBA. I want to get into the National Basketball Association and some of the movement (laughs) that we got going on in the National Basketball Association with free agency. The first thing, I'm going to start with you, Carlton Banks. Ray Allen chooses to go away from Boston and, and take his talents to South Beach. And there are some people in Boston who have a huge problem with Ray Allen. Let's say you live in Boston, or let's just say you're a Celtics fan. Do you have issues with Ray Allen taking his talents to South Beach? No. Why? I mean, he's there t- he's put it in his time. He's won his rings. He just needs to move on. He's won his ring. ring. Singular. Ring. Same thing. Singular. Ruben? Do I have a problem with it? Eh. People move all the time. They, you know, a lot of people want to make it out to be similar to when LeBron left Cleveland. I don't think it's the same because Ray yeah, Allen. Have a program and stuff. Well, Ray Allen has played on several teams. I mean, he played in Milwaukee and he played in Seattle and he played in Boston. You know, this isn't a guy who. I mean, he played five years in in Boston, but what did he play? Like six or seven in 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 Seattle. I mean, this isn't a guy who is a lifer in the town. This isn't a guy who grew up. You know, in the area, who played for one team, you know, his whole career and well, decided to leave. So I do think it's a little bit different. Mm, yeah, well, you kind disagree of with that? He was he was a Seattle lifer until they decided they won't go pay him. Right. <laughs> then he didn't have a choice. That that's pretty much what happened because he was by far the best player on that team for years. And even and they went to Oklahoma City and they were just like, look, man, you know, we're going to Oklahoma City. We can't take your contract. We can't pay you. And he was just like, well, I got to find a new home. And he found Boston. All right, fair enough. Yeah. I want to go ahead to the Facebook page. Maya is saying that she loved Jason Kidd when he was with the Nets. She cried and is still a die-hard fan of the Nets, even in, even if they left New Jersey. Uh, you aren't a true fan if you jump ship. Which brings me to Jason Kidd taking his talents to Broadway. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people seem to think, mostly Nick fans, and I'm somewhat on the fence with it, but I'm not speaking as a fan. I'm mostly speaking as a basketball analyst on this particular point, so let's keep it there for a second. Where do you see, Ruben, I'll start with you, with New York bringing in Jason Kidd after having been spurred uh, by Steve Nash, who we know went to your Lakers, and we're going to get into that in a minute. Jason Kidd mentoring Jeremy Lin, what do you think? Well, first of all, until New York decides that they're going to um, sign that trade offer, sign that offer sheet, I'm not sure if Jeremy Lin going to New York. They've said they're going to do it. However, I mean, I guess they got to wait till the 11th. But, you know, they keep saying they're going to do it, but I haven't seen anything. I guess on the 11th, we're going to find out really what New York is about. Because other than that, I mean, Jason Kidd wanted to go to New York to mentor Jeremy Lin. Right. If Jeremy Lin is not there, does Jason Kidd then say, I'm out? He didn't sign anything. Right. He just agreed in, in principle. Right. But, I mean, that's the purpose. If you're going to pay Jeremy Lin $25 million, I mean, you have other financial problems in New York. Is that really worth it? Well, it is the thing. The, my point on Jeremy Lin, I, you know, I watch him. I watch every Nick game, of course. And do I think he's a great point guard after 25 games of course not but do I think he has a high ceiling yeah I do I actually I do think he has a high ceiling and many people seem to think the five in the first year five two in the second year and the nine in that third year which is that poison pill that's going to be the year where the Knicks have severe uh, luxury tax implications Jason Kidd is signed for three years so they'll be there in theory together for three years do I think that could be a problem not really because Everybody seems to think that this kid's going to fail and that $9 million cap hit they take in the third year is going to be a problem. But what happens if he ends up being a stud? What, what, what happens if what we saw in that first 25 games that he played in last year before getting hurt turns out to be a small window into his greatness? Then you get him at $9 million, not only for a bargain in the third year, but you also have him as a team option 
in the fourth year. Now, would we have rather have had Steve Nash? Yeah, of course you'd rather have Steve Nash. But I don't think that having a guy who we know is going to the Hall of Fame, who by most accounts can give you 20 to 25 minutes a night in Jason Kidd, I don't see how that could be a problem, especially when you got a 23-year-old point guard who they will sign. They're not going to let him go because they don't have no other option. You're not going to sign Jason Kidd just so that you can let Jeremy Lin walk. So I don't think there's any I don't think that there's a snowball's chance in hell that they won't, you know, sign their restricted free agent, Jeremy Lin. Uh, you know, I don't think there's any chance that they won't do that. Uh, but I also think that there's a very good possibility that that's going to be good money in the third year. I, you know, Carlton, you got a comment on that? No, but I, I feel you, bro. Yeah. You. What about uh, what about Steve Nash going to Los Angeles, Ruben? Why don't you break that, that, uh, that sign and trade down with regards to the implications on the court? Sign and trade, three years, 25. Beautiful. They gave up four draft picks that, to be honest with you, the Lakers aren't going to really use anyway. So it is what it is. How is it impl- implicated on the court? We finally have a point guard who is really one of the best point guards in the NBA. All Kobe needed was a facilitator. Now they have that. The biggest question now is, do you trade Gasol? You know, I'm thinking no. I think they're going to use their amnesty on Metal World Peace, and they're going to re-sign um, uh, Matt Barnes, and they're going to try to maybe get another swing man, you know, the cheap. But other than that, I think they, I think they're done. Last person I want to get into in the NBA free agency is Dwight Howard. Uh, it appears that the New York, uh, I'm sorry, the Brooklyn Nets and the uh, Orlando Magic are trying to work out a four-team deal that will somehow land uh, uh, Dwight Howard in Brooklyn uh, for the foreseeable future. Now, a couple different ways you can look at this. One, Jack asked for signing a contract with Orlando and extending himself to right now and even be in this situation. He could have opted out and been a free agent right now and already been in Brooklyn. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I'm just not real keen on grown men whining about where they're going to make millions of dollars. We went through this with Lamar Odom. You know, we go, we went through this with Carmelo Anthony. And yeah, he ended up coming to my team. But real talk, I wasn't real happy with the dude whining about wanting to get out of the contract that he was in. I'm not fond of it. So to listen to this dude go back and forth, back and forth. I, I only play for Brooklyn. I mean, really, dude, seriously? I'm just not a real fan of that kind of thing. And then... Part of that deal is Chris Humphreys leaving Brooklyn and having to go to Cleveland and signing a one-year deal to make the money work. Not a multi-year deal, but a one-year deal to make the money work. Now, a lot of people know Chris Humphreys because he was married to Kim Kardashian for 20 minutes. But real talk, this dude ain't a bum, man. He's a stud. He's somebody who could sign a multi-year deal somewhere else. And not even sit around and wait for a sign and trade and be a part of any of this nonsense. So I don't really want to spend time talking about Chris Humphreys. But Ruben, is why Howard even worth all this? I mean, seriously. Did anybody not learn from the New York Denver trade? Really? Denver made out much better in New York so far. And they got like six people. All right. Well, before I'm mean, going to let you go on with that because it's not accurate. If you look at the two teams... And how far they've gone, they've gone equally far. Both teams went out in the first round of the playoffs in each postseason since the trade. So everybody's talking about Denver made out great and the Knicks didn't. It's just nonsense. It's somebody who doesn't want to give any credit to the Knicks. I was someone who was not fond of that trade. I wanted Carmelo. I did not like trading the assets we got. But I'm also going to keep it real. They didn't make out so much greater. Wilson Chandler, he's not even there anymore. Timothy Mozgov, he's buried on the bench. Raymond Felton, he flamed out in Denver. Mozgov he started. He's not started. He is started. We can argue that later. We but can't the, argue that later. We can argue that later. Gallinari, he's doing the same thing he did in New York, and he's playing so-so ball. So, really? Did they really make that much better? Yeah. Even if we say Mozgov is starting. They got two people that's playing from that trade. Wilson Chandler ended up in China. Robert Felton flamed down in Denver. He flamed out again in Portland to the point where the Knicks was talking about re-signing him before they got Jason Kidd to a minimum. So what are you talking about? The record. They won more games than you. Whatever, man. We talking about the playoffs. They won the playoffs. First of all, we talking about the playoffs. Both of them 
were went to the playoffs. They both went to the playoffs and lost in the first both round. Both of them were seven seeds. And they both lost in the first round. Denver played seven games. Y'all played five. What's the di- uh, okay, two now. They lost in the first round, Ruben. I, t- I take that back. They were a six seed. You, you, you're killing me. But no, it's, me. wins and losses, Denver won more games than, than New York. It is what it is. You can sit here and say, well, he's here and he's here. When it came down to it, Denver won like 46 games and New York won like 46. All right, back, back, all right. Now, we're going to agree to disagree on that, but we, we run out of time on this segment. Right. I want to get back to Dwight Howard. Well, Make I'll that put, point real quick back. and let's get back to Dwight Howard. The trade, we have multi team trades where you're dealing with like 13 people. Let's just be honest. It's stupid. Why would why would the Nets give up Brooke Lopez? They can re-sign Humphreys. Why would they give up all the talent that they have in the bench for Jason Richardson? I mean, Dwight Howard. First of all, we don't know how well Dwight Howard can play. He got hurt, number one. So his max money deal is gone because he's hurt. Number two, really, do you want a whiner on your squad? I mean, you can say what you want to hit being the best center in the league. We don't know what he is right now because he ain't played. Number two, number three, I just think all this trading and stuff is stupid. And if Dan Williams wants this dude, then fine. And, but let's just be real about it. You know, Dwight Howard, if he goes there, all this crying and stuff, Got to go. Well, we looking at we looking at the Brooklyn Nets right now. We looking at the fact that they got probably the best backcourt in the league with Darren Williams and Joe Johnson, who we didn't talk about, who did get the trade from Atlanta. There, they just re-signed Joe Wallace. Uh, they got Chris Humphrey starting uh, right now. They got Brooke Lopez. So. Even if they stay where they are right now, they're a pretty damn good team. They're they get, top five in the East. They're top five in the East right now, and I got them, you know, depending on what Amari does, they may even be ahead of the Knicks right now, in my personal in my personal opinion. So, you know, you got a lot that you can, you know, that you can chew on with regards to that. You get Dwight Howard in there, you could very possibly look at the Eastern Conference Finals with the Miami Heat and the Brooklyn Nets for the next two or three years. So, we're going to leave it there. Ain't no half stepping. With Marcus J. We're going to take a quick break. 804-447-0601. When we come back, we're going to do a brief segment on the state of rhythm and blues, R&B, and the state of, well, the state of the music here in America today. Big Rue is going to lead us through that. Top of the hour, we're going to profile a missing and or exploited child, and we're going to get into the tune a little. Ain't no half step. And Marcus J. Be back in a minute. Adam. 